Gary Butler and a selection of the great and the good are clambering up the scaffolding to mark a significant milestone. Yeah, like a jackrabbit. It's the topping out ceremony, good the traditional celebration where the architect thanks the builders for completing the structural work on the house. And there's even a cake to cut. Thank you all for coming, but really the thank you today is to all the builders, Fullers, William, Dave White, all the chaps who work on it, Mark over the far side who's done all the brick laying. I'm going to run up to the scaffold and I'm going to tie a sprig of green onto the, uh, onto the building, a symbolic new birth. A sprig of green, well done builders, fantastic, thank you Fullers all your effort, it'll be a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, really, really good feeling. Yeah, I really enjoyed the job. Great, fantastic. They're all yeah. longing for a bit of cake. Oh, look at that. Brilliant. Terrific. This exceptional turning point in the conservation of Turner's house. The external envelope is completed and the scaffold will come down next week and then the internal fitting up will take place. So it's a great moment. Another recent milestone for the Turner House Trust is the appointment of the celebrated painter Ken Howard as a patron of the charity. Ken Howard likes to paint to the strains of Rachmaninoff in his splendid studio in Kensington. And he's a lifelong admirer of Turner. Turner is the one man that I really do believe is an English genius, visual genius. I, I use the term genius very, very rarely, but Turner is one of the few English painters who I think you could define of as a genius. I suppose I quite like the idea that, like Turner, I came from, now I've got the violin out, I came from a, a so-called working-class background, which a lot of painters do. I mean, my great advantage was that my father didn't say to me when I said I wanted to paint for a living, don't do it, son, you'll never make a living. He just said, if that's what you want to do, you'd better do it. I've only got one thing to say, and that is I've got no money. So you'll have to keep yourself. And, of course, Turner was very much of that ilk. His father... His, Father was a, a barber, and Turner first of all showed his work in the barber shop. I think he used it really as a way of getting away from London, which I can understand very fully. And of course, Turner loved fishing, and he could have gone down and done his fishing on the river at, at Twickenham or Richmond. Recently, Ken Howard followed in the footsteps of one of Turner's many European trips. Switzerland is an astonishing place. It's very, very awe-inspiring. The mountains, the lakes, everything about it is, if you like, larger than life, which of course inspired Turner. Although the book is called In the Footsteps of Turner, we both worked in very different ways because most of the things in the book are paintings that I did actually on the spot, whereas Turner would have come back to London or in his hotel in the evening, he might have developed the drawing. But a completely different approach. I mean, Turner was, in a way, pre-impressionism. Pre and the Impressionists worked on the spot as I do because the Industrial Revolution had produced tubes of paint and you could go out and squeeze some paint on the palette and paint. Whereas in Turner's time, you would have had to go out and mix the colour or grind the colour even. Whereas after Impressionism, painters could work on the spot, a la prima as it's called straight on.